Hello everyone, welcome back. So uh, in the last lecture I talked about the scattering phenomena which is fundamental to various uh, nanoscale uh, photonics. So in this lecture I would like to talk about uh, plasmonic resonance. Okay. So and as I was mentioning previously, essentially plasmonics is the science of interaction of light with metals. Okay. Metals play a key role in this. Okay. And uh, before I go into the details of what plasmonics is, I just want to get some terminology out of the way. Okay. So basically there are different types of plasmonic resonances people talk about in the literature. Okay. And I'll show you what those are in a moment. So to understand what these different types of plasmonic resonances are, we'll have to look at uh, Maxwell's equations and we can we can do some mathematics uh, basic uh, operations algebra on that and we can obtain an expression which is shown here okay so this will be there in any textbook and i really don't want to get into it so i'm just giving the expression so essentially this is a vector equation so you have the k vector it's, that means that you know wave can be in any direction it's not having any of the three uh, coordinates and then electric field also is three dimensional and then you have the permittivity and then the omega square okay so if you notice, this is a bit of an advanced uh, thing, but just for sake of accuracy, I have put in here. The epsilon, if you notice here, it has a k dependence. Okay. This is basically an advanced thing which we call as non-locality in the literature. Okay. What essentially it means is that, uh, well, the epsilon can even uh, depend on the size of the structure. But this is only applicable when the structures are very, very small. For example, I think of thin films of less than one nanometer or so or you know, nanoparticles of that scale of you know less than you know, nanometers okay if the object is of the size of nanometers then we have to worry if it is not then we don't have to worry and we'll actually simply call it as epsilon of omega so epsilon only depends on the frequency that we have seen last time okay so just you know this is just for the sake of clarification i had put in here okay so yeah this equation is valid okay now to classify the various type of plasmonic resonances we consider whether the wave is transverse or longitudinal. Okay, what do I mean by transverse wave? For example, first let's consider the transverse wave. Okay, when we say transverse, we essentially mean that electric field is perpendicular to the direction of propagation. So essentially, k dot e equal to zero. Okay, these are the transverse. K is perpendicular to e. So when you have such a scenario. Then essentially the relation above uh, gives you a simplified uh, dispersion relation which is k square equal to epsilon of omega. So I'm, I'm removing the non-locality part. So let's forget that right now. And omega square by c square. Okay, This is the generalized dispersion relation for transverse wave. So any of this electromagnetic radiation we are talking about, we are only talking about uh, transverse waves, right? Electric field is perpendicular. So when you have such a scenario, what happens? Well, as I said, plasmonics is science of interaction of light with metals, right? And we know metals dispersion relation is given by 1 minus omega p square. I'm considering an ideal metal, okay? So 1 minus omega p square by omega, c square, omega square divided uh, into omega square by c square. This is k square. So if you rearrange it, quickly you'll see that omega square equal to omega p square plus c square k square okay so when you have metal uh, no rather let me pick right here so when you have light interacting with metals we have a different dispersion which is given by this here what does it mean well we have already seen the regular light line the dispersion for plane waves right so wherein we talked about uh, k omega versus k relation and we said that light essentially is this particular line omega equal to ck this is a familiar electromagnetic wave which is propagating in free space but when you think of a wave which is interacting with metals the dispersion is now modified and how is it modified at k equal to zero there is this omega doesn't go to zero or rather yeah uh, but it becomes omega p so if you plot this relation it will effectively turn out to be something like this. Okay. So this is my omega p square. Okay. What it means is that 
this this essentially is what we call as a plasmon dispersion here this is, i'll call as plasmon dispersion what essentially it means is that these can exist only at omegas greater than the light omega ck they cannot exist below omega equal to ck all right so this is what we call as you know generally in the literature this type of uh, waves wherein you have transverse electromagnetic waves interacting with uh, metals we call them as surface plasmons okay again there are many sub categories in this when you talk of a surface uh, you know when it's a uh, interacting with a nanoparticle we we call it localized surface plasmon when you have interaction of light with a uh, interface of metal and dielectric we call it the wave propagates so we call it surface plasmon polariton and so on these are the different terms that we see in the literature okay this is for the transverse waves in addition you can also have longitudinal waves okay what do i mean by longitudinal waves wherein you basically have k is parallel to e okay when you have such a scenario your dispersion on the left side in the in the equation here if you see on the top the left side becomes zero essentially your dispersion becomes oops, epsilon of omega equal to sorry epsilon of omega omega square by c square equal to zero the trivial solution is no frequency right omega equal to zero this is valid another non trivial solution is basically this equation will be satisfied when epsilon of omega equal to 0 and we know that in metals this happens at plasma frequency if i take my ideal metal epsilon of omega equal to 1 minus omega p omega p square by omega square at the frequency of plasma frequency when omega equal to omega p the epsilon goes to 0 and you can actually excite what are known as bulk plasmons okay these are known as bulk or volume plasmons all right the interesting thing is these are longitudinal waves and they cannot couple to the regular electromagnetic waves if i shine light on a metal i cannot excite a bulk plasmon the reason is the incident wave electromagnetic wave is transverse and so it cannot excite this bulk plasmons but they can be excited back in the olden days in 60s and 70s when plasmonics was in the nascent stages people looked at what happens when you have when you shine electro electron beams on metals and they looked at their you know energy loss spectroscopy and uh, things like that and in those experiments wherein you are actually uh, you know uh, you are you have an electron beam e beam irradiation then you can excite this bulk plasmons and you will see that okay at the plasma frequency you will see this plasmon getting excited and so you have an absorption peak okay but in the regular case we don't all right so this is just for the sake of academic interest you know that uh, i mentioned and we will not really get into the bulk plasmon part in this course okay we will only focus on the surface plasmons which are essentially interaction of transverse electromagnetic waves with metal structures okay this is a bit of a clarification so now this is a very interesting case okay the simplest possible plasmonic uh, effect that you can see okay wherein i am considering an electromagnetic wave which is incident on a metal nanoparticle what happens okay so to simplify my life initially i make what is known as a quasi static approximation what i mean by that is let's say if i have my electromagnetic wave it is basically let's say it's oscillating in a form of sine wave like this okay oh just i'm sorry i have a sine wave like this what i'm essentially assuming is the electric field over the nanoparticle is going to be constant okay so i'll represent my electric field in this direction i'll call it e not how can this happen electric field all over a nanoparticle is constant well this is the wavelength right if i have a wave like this this is going to be my distance is going to be wavelength lambda and suppose my particle is very very small compared to you know this i'll call it as let's say d the size of the particle is d and it is much much smaller than lambda then effectively the particle will experience a constant electric field okay so this is known as a quasi static approximation so essentially electric field e field is constant over the uh, acro across the 
ನ್ಯಾನೋ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಕಲ್ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ನೋ ವಾಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ಸ್ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸಚ್ ಎ ಕ್ವಾಸಿ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಟಿಕ್ ಅಪ್ರಾಕ್ಸಿಮೇಷನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಅ ಸಿಂಪ್ಲೆಸ್ಟ್ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ದಟ್ ಯು ವುಡ್ ಹವ್ ಸಾಲ್ವ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ಎಲೆಕ್ಟ್ರೋ ಮ್ಯಾಗ್ನೆಟಿಕ್ಸ್ ಎಲೆಕ್ಟ್ರೋಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಟಿಕ್ಸ್ ರಾಜರ್ ಯು ನೋ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಲೆಟ್ಸ್ ಎ ಟೇಕ್ ಎ ಲುಕ್ ಎಟ್ ಅ ಬುಕ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಗ್ರಿಫಿಟ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಇಂಟ್ರೊಡಕ್ಷನ್ ಟು ಎಲೆಕ್ಟ್ರೋ ಡೈನಾಮಿಕ್ಸ್ ಐ ತಿಂಕ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ತ್ರೀ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಅ ಸೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಆನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಯು ನೋ ವೇರ್ ದೇ ಸಾಲ್ವ್ ಹೌ ಅ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಕಲ್ ಮೆಟಲ್ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಕಲ್ ಆರ್ ಮೆಟಲ್ ಸ್ಪಿಯರ್ ಇಂಟ್ರಾಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಅ ಕಾನ್ಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಎಲೆಕ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ ಫೀಲ್ಡ್ ಓಕೆ ದ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಟು ರಿಕಗ್ನ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಟು ರಿಕಗ್ನೈಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಎಲೆಕ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ ಫೀಲ್ಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಾನ್ಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಎಟ್ ಎನಿ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಬಟ್ ಓವರ್ ಟೈಮ್ ದ ಎಲೆಕ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ ಎಲೆಕ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ ಫೀಲ್ಡ್ ಕೆನ್ ಕೀಪ್ ಸ್ವೀಪಿಂಗ್ ಸ್ವೀಪಿಂಗ್ ಆರ್ ಸ್ವಿಚಿಂಗ್ ರಾಜರ್ ಯು ನೋ ಸೊ ಯುಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಎಟ್ ಒನ್ ಮೂಮೆಂಟ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ಅನದರ್ ಮೂಮೆಂಟ್ ಯು ನೋ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಇಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಔಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಫೇಸ್ ರೈಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫೋರ್ ದ ಎಲೆಕ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ ಫೀಲ್ಡ್ ಕೀಪ್ ಸ್ವಿಚಿಂಗ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಬಟ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಎಸ್ಯೂಮಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಎಟ್ ಎನಿ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಾನ್ಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಅಕ್ರಾಸ್ ಅನ್ ಆನೋ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಕಲ್ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ಡು ಯು ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಓಕೆ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಟೈಮ್ ಬಿಹೇವಿಯರ್ ವಿಲ್ ಟೇಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕಾನ್ಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಎಲೆಕ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ ಫೀಲ್ಡ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಗಿವ್ಸ್ ಅಸ್ ಅ ಲಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಇನ್ಸೈಟ್ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ನಾವ್ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸಚ್ ಎ ಸಿನಾರಿಯೋ ದ ಎಲೆಕ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ ಫೀಲ್ಡ್ ವಿಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಕಾಸ್ ದ ಎಲೆಕ್ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಮೂವ್ ರೈಟ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಕಾಸ್ ಅ ಸೆಪರೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಪಾಸಿಟಿವ್ ನೆಗೆಟಿವ್ ಚಾರ್ಜಸ್ ಹೌ ವಿಲ್ ದ ಚಾರ್ಜ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಎಲೆಕ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ ಎಲೆಕ್ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಮೂವ್ ಟು ದ ಮೈನಸ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಪಾಸಿಟಿವ್ ಚಾರ್ಜಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಅಕ್ಯುಮುಲೇಟ್ ಆನ್ ದ ರೈಟ್ ಸೈಡ್ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸಚ್ ಎ ಡೈಪೋಲ್ ವಿ ಎಸೆನ್ಶಿಯಲಿ ಆರ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆರ್ ಇಂಡ್ಯೂಸ್ಡ್ ಡೈಪೋಲ್ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಕ್ಯೂಸ್ ಮಿ ಸೊ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಫೀಲ್ಡ್ ಅ ಕಾನ್ಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಎನ್ಸೆಷನಲಿ ಲೀಡ್ಸ್ ಟು ಇಂಡ್ಯೂಸ್ಡ್ ಡೈಪೋಲ್ ಓಕೆ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸೆಪರೇಟೆಡ್ ಪಾಸಿಟಿವ್ ನೆಗೆಟಿವ್ ಚಾರ್ಜಸ್ ವೇರ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಪಾಸಿಟಿವ್ ಚಾರ್ಜಸ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ವೆಲ್ ದೆ ಆರ್ ದ ನ್ಯೂಕ್ಲಿಯಸ್ ಯು ನೋ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದ ಎಲೆಕ್ಟ್ರಾನ್ ಕ್ಲೌಡ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಬೇಸಿಕಲಿ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಬ್ಯೂಟೆಡ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಸ್ಲೈಟ್ಲಿ ಶಿಫ್ಟ್ ಟು ದ ಲೆಫ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಪಾಸಿಟಿವ್ ನ್ಯೂಕ್ಲಿಯಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಎಸೆನ್ಶಿಯಲಿ ದ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ರೌಂಡ್ ವಾಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಸಿಂಗ್ ಎ ಯು ನೋ ಎಸ್ ಎಫೆಕ್ಟಿವ್ಲಿ ಯು ಕೆನ್ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಆಫ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಸೇ ಅ ಸ್ಪಿಯರ್ ನ್ಯೂಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಸ್ಪಿಯರ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ಐಮ್ ಸಾರಿ ಯಾ ಇಟ್ ಬಿಕೇಮ್ ಅನ್ ಓವೆ ಓವೆಲ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಮಿ ಟ್ರೈ ಟು ಮೇಕ್ ಇಟ್ ಅ ಸರ್ಕಲ್ ಸೊ ಎಸೆನ್ಶಿಯಲಿ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದ ನ್ಯೂಕ್ಲಿಯಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಸೇ ಇನ್ ಬ್ಲ್ಯಾಕ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಪಾಸಿಟಿವ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಮೈ ಎಲೆಕ್ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಆರ್ ಸ್ಲೈಟ್ಲಿ ಡಿಸ್ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ಡ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ well you have no i exaggerated this so effectively this is my negative charge and this is my positive charge when such a scenario happens there is this induced dipole that is created because of the net positive and negative charges and there is a electric field induced field right so within the nanoparticle there will be a induced e induced and how much is this e induced e induced you know how much well if you look at the basic uh, electrostatics we know that the electric field inside the metal has to be zero why should it be zero well if it is not zero the electrons will move and rearrange in such a way that electric field becomes zero so therefore at any instant of time e induced is going to be equal to minus e not so essentially inside the nanoparticle the electric field is getting cancelled out outside you have the field okay and then of course you have this uh, dipole that is created basically this positive and negative charges that will cause that and that dipole is changing in time so that will cause radiation all right so this is the basic uh, principle uh, idea all right so now what happens okay so if you let's say go and look at griffiths
Okay, so electric field inside is zero here, and the tangential component has to be continuous. So electric field here also has to be zero. You can have surface charges only when there is a jump in the electric field. So there is no charge on the perpendicular direction. Only along the uh, direction of the electric field, you have this charge separation, and that is what is captured by this cos expression here. When you see this, the cos theta essentially tells you that the charges are getting separated along the electric field and if you go in the polar direction you know along the polar direction the density reduces okay so here my density of charge or induced charge reduces in polar direction okay so now what else well you see that there is this nice term epsilon 1 plus 2 epsilon 2 and we have already seen something interesting happens when the denominator goes to 0. So now what happens when epsilon 1 plus 2 epsilon 2 equal to 0 or equal to or close to 0 let us say. What happens? Well polarization exhibits a resonant response right. So basically this polarization exhibits what do you mean by that well it just means that the surface charges are going to ex i mean become very very strong this large amount of this plus and minus charges that is created whenever epsilon is equal to uh, epsilon 1 equal to minus 2 epsilon 2 whenever this equation is satisfied how can this happen well it happens because again going back we know that epsilon 1 equal to uh, I mean rather I am considering an ideal material ideal metal or rather if I take a drude metal it will be omega p square by omega square plus i gamma omega this is my permittivity okay if I take an ideal metal it will simply be 1 minus omega p square by omega square okay so now what happens when omega is less than omega p the expression becomes negative epsilon 1 becomes negative and therefore you can have a scenario wherein at let's say okay what is the condition for the resonant response so 1 minus omega p square divided by omega square is my permittivity to the metal i ignore the loss for now plus 2 epsilon 2 epsilon 2 i said is a medium so let's consider that as air okay epsilon 2 as air so 1 that is equal to 0 this implies my 3 right 3 and omega this goes this side so basically omega equal to omega p omega square equal to omega p square divided by 3 okay so this is a characteristic frequency so and we'll call it a we'll give it a name we'll call it surface plasma frequency which is omega p divided by root of 3 at that frequency whenever you have a plasma frequency of a metal you know and roughly at this distance okay omega omega p by root 3 it essentially becomes close to 1 or uh, close to minus 2 and that's why it becomes resonant okay just remember that you know this is this is for an ideal metal if you take you know i'll give you an example problem in the you know either in the homework or in the exam so wherein i'll ask you to calculate for let's say a real metal i'll give you let's say maybe you know i'll give you this instead of one i'll give you an epsilon infinity okay i'll give epsilon infinity minus omega p square divided by omega square what happens to the plasma frequency okay you just find out where the denominator goes to zero and that's the resonant response okay for a more real metal all right so if the denominator is going to zero does it mean that the surface charge becomes infinite okay does it mean the charge accumulated on the left and the right becomes infinity well it does not okay the reason is that we have ignored the the imaginary part of the metal right because there is this gamma term here in this case there is this gamma which is going to limit the amount of charge okay finally you will see that in the denominator there is going to be a gamma and because gamma is never truly zero there is a finite amount of uh, surface charge that you are creating okay and this particular 
resonance is known as localized surface plasma on resonance localized surface plasma on resonance lspr okay so what happens in this at this lspr well if i actually you know uh, look at the way you know let's say now instead of uh, epsilon what happens when epsilon is positive let's say dielectric right if i take my sphere to be in this case uh, epsilon let's say you know sphere right this is let's say epsilon is 3 when you have epsilon equal to 3 a dielectric which is you know possible right i can think of a dielectric which has an epsilon of 3 if i have such a scenario what will be my surface charge there is still this polarization that is created on the surfaces but that is going to be roughly equal to 3 epsilon not into uh, 3 minus let's say 1 which is 2 divided by 3 plus 2 5 uh, uh, 5 into e not cos theta so when i have this kind of a scenario i'm going to have a very small amount of surface charge okay if i have a dielectric but instead if epsilon equal to 3 if i have epsilon negative let's say minus 2 if i assume then you will see that the surface charge is going to blow up okay so what does it mean this is the exact you know the way it looks is captured by this uh, scheme uh, schematic here so essentially consider a situation wherein you have let's say electric field in the positive direction you will see that if you put a negative epsilon here the whole polarization turns out to be negative there is a phase lag in this at the resonant frequency there is a phase lag and because of that you will see that there are this positive and negative charges that are coming in all right and similarly as the wave changes you know you go to the negative part of the you know when the electric field reverses then you have positive and negative this oscillation of electric field which happens and that is what we were calling it surface plasma on resonance okay and this uh, localized surface plasma on resonance lspr so basically charge density oscillation is out of phase all right you will see that there is a negative then that comes in all right so that's why it happens out of phase with uh, driving field and if you go slightly out of resonance you know slightly you know close to uh, let's say instead of being at omega not at the resonant frequency slightly away from it there will be an additional phase lag that is being captured by this term phi all right so this is how the plasma on resonance looks like all right so i'll stop this lecture here and in the next lecture i'll talk about how to excite these surface plasmons and so on okay yeah uh, yeah there's a question saurabh yeah, what is it can can you stand up and speak please i can see yeah yeah oh well the question is is a plasmonic resonance related only to gold because everywhere i'm showing you this gold well i don't have that much of affinity to gold but yeah any metal none of any noble metal will work the idea is that if you looked at the second week of lectures go back and review the dielectric permittivity you will see that for gold and silver the loss is quite low the gamma factor that i'm talking about right the gamma factor has to be small so i said epsilon is going to be epsilon 1 for a metal it's going to be epsilon infinity minus omega p square divided by omega square plus i gamma omega so this gamma is a capturing the loss in the metal okay this is a collision rate effectively and the collision rate we saw was about you know less than 50 femtoseconds right time collision time is less than 50 femtoseconds so rate is something okay so if you compare different metals you will see that the gamma factor is smallest for silver first and then gold the problem is i can also use silver to get this plasmonic resonances but silver sulfidizes when you expose it to atmosphere it sulfidizes and because of which it doesn't work very well okay that's why we end up using uh, gold typically that's it okay all right but gold and silver are the most prominent plasmonic materials yeah anything else if not okay all right thank you so much i'll catch you in the next lecture wherein we'll talk about uh, as i said how to excite this plasmons and what are the size dependencies all right see you then thank you